Greetings, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Are we facing the possibility of a Great Depression? I'm not just talking about recession, my friends. I'm talking about a full-fledged depression. More and more commentators and analysts around the world ta are talking about that possibility. I have here an article which I pulled from the Internet, which was published by the Daily Mail, a British newspaper, on April 10, stating, Worldwide Financial Crisis. And then they go on to say that the United States of America and Great Britain will be hit the hardest. Another article by Der Spiegel Online, a German magazine, was published on March 29, saying that a worldwide disaster for banks is coming. Not just banks in the United States of America, but worldwide. In addition, the Independent, which is a British paper, wrote on April 1, and this is the exact headline, USA 2008, the Great Depression. They are talking about the possibility that we are going to face a Great Depression in this country before this year of 2008 is up. And USA Today published on March 18, 2008, an article saying that 76% of Americans believe that the economy is already in a recession. And now I'm quoting, asked if the nation could slip into a depression lasting several years, 59% said it was likely, and 79% said that they were worried about it. Terrible times might come, my friends, and the question for you is, what are you going to do about them? How are you going to cope with those events, if in fact they are going to occur? Are you in debt? How are you going to get out of debt? Do you care? I found an article on the Internet, which was published by Yahoo.com, but they actually republished it from Bankrate.com, which is titled, The Seven Deadly Sins That Lead to Debt. And i like to very briefly quote from that article. First deadly sin is envy. And the article says that consumers can get caught up trying to keep up with the Joneses or the middle class families they see on TV, believing that they should own the same things others own. Second, sin, forget that pride goes before a fall. It says all human beings suffer from overconfidence, but Americans more than anyone. Deadly sin number three is be slothful with finances. Failure to pay attention to loan terms, for example, and to due dates can have severe consequences. And this article points out that about 34% of homeowners don't even know what kind of a mortgage they have, whether it's fixed or whether it's adjustable. Sin number four, get greedy when borrowing. Why buy an economy car when you can get a loan for twice as much and ride around in style? Bit number five. Feel wrathful at everyone but yourself. Blame others for your own financial missteps. That way you'll never have to learn anything new. Sin number six, be gluttonous. You deserve that cookie, so go ahead and take it and maybe another one. While you're at it, buy the bedroom set you can't afford but deeply desire. And deadly sin number seven, let lust lead you into spending. And unbelievably, perhaps, but it's estimated that Americans spend between 10 to $13 billion a year on adult entertainment. So how much more profitable could that money be spent? Now, I'm not saying that everyone who is in debt has followed these terrible character traits. Some have gotten into debt without any fault of their own. But in far too many cases, Problems like these have existed. And what all these character traits show is a selfish attitude. And so when we want to get out of debt, or when we want to make sure that we don't get into debt, we have to develop another kind of an attitude. The Bible calls this love. In the book of Romans, Paul says, don't owe anything to anyone except that you love your brother. Love is outgoing concern for the welfare and the benefit of other people. And so if you are in a financial dilemma, pray to God. For instance, if you don't have a job, pray to God to give you the opportunity to find a job. But it is work to find work. 
And once you have found work, don't spend what you earn on your lusts, as we read in the book of James, not to do. But Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians that we are to then have means to help those who are in need. Again, showing the outgoing concern, the love for other people. Christ tells us that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, this doesn't make any sense to the human mind, to the carnal, natural human mind. We think that we will be more blessed financially when we reap and get more. But Christ says, no, just the opposite is true, because it shows an outgoing concern for the benefit and welfare of others, the way of sharing and giving to others which we all have to develop. And Christ even says, with the same measure you give, with that same measure you will receive. Paul says, if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But then at the same time, don't give because of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver, one who wants to live this way of life. And all these character traits are in total opposite to the ones we have just discussed, which lead to debt, like greed and envy. But there is one most important aspect of how you can ensure that you will have financial prosperity even in the face of disaster around you. And that is put God first in your life. Set your priorities straight. Christ told his disciples not to worry about what to eat and what to drink and what to wear. But he said, seek you God first and his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Because he says, your father knows that you are in need of all those things. But you have to look at God and have to obey him and have to ask for his help and God will help you. You have to ask in faith, not doubting that God will and can do what you ask him to do. And we read in the first letter of John, that we already have the petitions of our heart because we know that he hears us because we love him. Again, here is love towards God and love towards neighbor and because we keep his commandments. Well, we cannot expect to be blessed from God if we violate his law, but at the same time, we can and must expect to be protected and helped by God if we are doing the things which are pleasing to him. A worldwide depression might come very soon, and you will be found in the middle of it. If you make God your partner, if you turn to God, and if you let him fight your financial battles for you, changing your attitude from a way of get to a way of give, then you can be rest assured that you will be protected and blessed. Thank you very much for watching. This is Nobert Link for the Standing Watch program.